Product development essentially means all the steps you take from the idea of a product to actually putting it in the market for your customers. If you look at the approach we're taking for Terranar's product development versus some of our competitors, I'd like to break it down by three or four different categories of the approach. One is the scope and the sequence of all the work going on in development. Another one is how much analysis or simulation that a team will do to predict things before they actually will experience them. And the third one, how much content is in the first vehicle versus the end state vehicle as you get further into the life cycle of the product. The traditional approach to product development in aerospace is extremely serial. You'd have a whole design and development flow that results in a qualification design that you take through a qualification campaign. And only at that point would you really kick off full flight production. You do a lot of acceptance testing and testing at component level. That way you minimize the risk to your stage campaign, but you also push those things out because you need to get through all of these component level qualification and acceptance tests before you're willing to go to stage test. If you look at a lot of the very risky startups that are out there in the launch industry, a lot of them aren't doing a lot of testing at smaller levels of assembly. They're trying just to get to the launch pad or to a stage test, and they're also not reusable. So in that sort of environment, it's very hard to learn as you go. There may be a lot of surprises that you find because individual high-risk items weren't studied in advance or tested in advance, and that can lead to a pretty tough stage test campaign or even the loss of the vehicle pretty early in a mission. And we've seen that uh, in the industry time and time again. So when we look at the Terran R approach, we're trying to optimize between those two and learn where we need to at the small scale where it's less expensive, but still pull the learning from working at the full scale ahead as fast as we can. So what that means for us is that because we need to start building flight parts before we've completed all of our qualification, we may need to include some adjustability or optionality in the design that actually gets released. We also try to leverage acceptance testing at the system level where we think that's appropriate. We may not ATP every single component before we go to an engine test or a stage test if a component failure during that higher level test is not gonna be catastrophic. We believe that full scale testing at the stage level or as high a level of integration as you can is really the best way to learn about your design. We're focused on trying to accelerate to those huge proof points as fast as possible. We really depend on the experience of our, our leadership and our senior engineering team to know what are the smart risks to take versus what are the things that we really need to get right up front. The fastest path to first flight is not a one size fits all answer. We really need to tailor our approach to each subsystem based on the criticality, the fault tolerance, how much you need to test, et cetera. Something like the primary structure is more amenable to analysis and you really don't have time to iterate it. So you've got to get that right the first time. That goes through a more rigorous analysis and qualification approach than something like, say, an avionics box that you do have a chance to iterate if you need to. We do test those things at the component level, but the design cycle is much shorter, so we may not spend as much time in analysis. And then the engine obviously has a high dependence on tests. There's things that we can only learn on the test stand, and it's going to have to be an iterative design. So in the engine team, we really focus on getting things out to test quickly rather than spending our time in analysis, learning on the test stand, and iterating the design that way. Having a manufacturing strategy that's aligned with our need to develop the product quickly and get to the right risk level for our customers, that, that's really the name of the game. In areas where we know we need to iterate to learn, we use manufacturing processes that are really nimble. And the main area for that is our propulsion system. Using a combination of powder bed fusion and WAM technology and then some other techniques that we might be the first in the world to use, we are able to learn really quickly on our test stands and also through design and analysis, make changes, get back to the test stand and get closer to that really end goal product. And then similarly, when it comes to things that are very long lead items where we don't have the opportunity to iterate as much like primary structure, we use techniques where we know the reliability is very high. Traditional methods that you might see on other rockets, we use those too, and then we put our own special spin on it. We're optimizing for the things that matter to our business. Speed of getting the product out the door and getting customers on board, payload to orbit, and reusability, which unlocks the economics that we really need for long-term success. That means that when we're assessing technologies, we're not necessarily looking at what's the most advanced thing out there. We're looking at the things that meet those needs. How do we get a reusable vehicle out there quickly so we can start flying customers? Across the Terran R program, every single decision, every single engineer or technician is focused on what we call the food, water, shelter of rockets, which are performance to orbit, development time, and the cost of whatever component or system they're developing. We try to make it very clear that even if one system is not hitting its own perfect targets, if we're delivering that target for our customer at the end of the day, then we're still being successful.
You can't just focus on speed to first launch though. The long-term key to this program is really reusability and payload performance to orbit. We do have to find the right key drivers within the design for getting to reusability quickly and the key drivers for performance. And those things are gonna require more attention and more upfront investment than things that uh, are still required to fly, but maybe less critical to the long-term success of the program. So when we look at the balance of getting to a first launch and serving our very first customer in the launch business at Relativity versus developing a reusable high cadence vehicle for the future, the approach that I recommend is to try and make them the same thing. There may be some cases where we make a decision on a small part of the first rocket that isn't perfect to fly 50 times a year, but by learning on that first one, we will go faster to the second or third iteration of that part or system to actually hit the high cadence. My job really overall is to find those opportunities to pull the learning ahead and then make the goal the same, even though we have different outcomes in different parts of the program.